Hello there! If you're stuck on standard deviation or how to calculate standard error of the mean and 95% confidence interval and how to place error bars on a graph, this video is for you. We're going to begin with standard deviation. Notice here I have sample data. So let's assume we were growing plants and then we measured the height. So one plant um, grew 10 centimeters over a particular period of time. Another plant grew 12 centimeters and the third plant grew 20 centimeters. So therefore, our sample mean is 14 centimeters. So we have the first value, 10, minus the mean, which is 14, squared. Notice there is a summation sign, so it means we have to add these values together. Second value was 12, 14 is our mean, squared. And the third one minus 14 squared. And now what we have to do is figure out the degrees of freedom, which would be the sample size, the number of data points we had in the sample data. So n minus 1, so it means we have 3 minus 1. And once we do all the calculations, we are going to get here 5.29. This is our standard deviation. Now, in order to calculate standard error of the mean, we are going to take our standard deviation and divide by square root sample size. So once we perform the calculations here, we're going to get 3.05. The next thing that you want to do is figure out the 95% confidence intervals. So there is a formula to do that. So 95% confidence, confidence interval is 1.96 standard deviation over square root n. However, we can actually estimate this. So all we have to do is double your standard, standard error of the mean to get your 95% confidence interval. We're going to round this figure right here, and it's totally OK to do so. So we have standard or error of the mean of 3.05, double it, times 2, and you're going to get 6.1. This figure is your 95% confidence interval. So now, what do we do with it? How do we place this interval on the graph? I am going to go ahead and give you one example here. So let's say we have a mean of 21 centimeters here. So this is the high of the bar. And that's where we're going to begin. So we have to add 6.1 to 21 centimeters. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Here it is. So this is going to be the high end of the interval. So that's, that's 6.1. And then we have to do the lower value of this interval. So which is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.1. It's going to be somewhere here also. So we're basically looking at this range that this interval contains. So the high value is going to be 27.1 and the low value 14.9. So what this tells us is that in about 95% of cases, these arrow bars, this interval is going to include the population mean. And once we place these intervals on all of our bars, we can actually compare these intervals and see if they overlap. So for example, this one is going to be this high and this low. So notice that this interval right here will have some of the data points that we can find within this range here of this category. So it means these indicate overlapment. So we see these two error bars overlap, and therefore the means, the difference between these two means is not going to be statistically significant. If the error bar, for example, here, notice there is no overlapment, and I'm comparing here to the category one, then it means the difference between this mean 
and this mean is going to be statistically significant. And in some other cases, you're going to notice that the arrow bars barely overlap. So the high value and the low value of two different data set barely come in contact with one another. Uh, in that situation, you would have to do a t-test, which is another statistical test, and um, it's beyond the scope of this course, so you're not going to have to do it. So you would just say your results are inconclusive, and you would need to do more testing.